So we're going to start out with the overview of analytic geometry, or at least the geometry that analytic geometry that we're going to look at, and we're going to look specifically at conics. So conics are double cones or double infinite cone. So how does a double cone look? You can draw one cone, except when you want to draw a double cone, you basically draw a tall X, and then you get a cone on the top and bottom. So it looks kind of like an hourglass, except obviously the sand would fall out because this is supposed to be infinite. All right, it's an infinite double cone, so it goes on forever. So we can draw arrows like this going off. You could think about this as being generated by rotating. So if we have just some line and a point on the line, if we rotate this line like this, it will turn into a conic. So you have a diagonal line that you rotate around. And the best way I can do it is with a pen. Maybe it's easier with this coffee mug. It's pretty big and easy to see. But you turn it sideways like this, and then you kind of rotate it around like this. And that's how you can generate that object. Now what we're going to do is take this conic and cut it up in a couple different ways. Intersect the conic with the plane. And the way we're going to draw a plane is we're just going to draw a parallelogram and then call it a plane. All right, what are the ways we can intersect a conic with the plane? We'll go through from easiest to think about to most difficult. So there is a way to get a single point. How can we intersect a conic and a plane to get a single point? I'll highlight the point that I'm trying to get. So we just cut through. There's actually a lot of planes that would cut through and intersect in one place. Probably the most obvious is a horizontal plane right there that cuts perfectly through. You can absolutely tilt the plane a little bit as long as it doesn't tilt past one of these lines right here. So it doesn't have to be perfectly, oops, that was way too much. It doesn't have to be perfectly horizontal. It can be slightly off. Uh, but as long as it intersects in one point, it'll be okay. So I'll just draw a horizontal one that's intersecting at one point. So we can get a single point. How can I get a circle intersecting with the plane? What kind of plane intersection will give me a circle? So a horizontal plane that doesn't go through that point at the center. So it's important that the plane's horizontal over here, but it just does not go through the center. So it'll cut a circle out. So it'll intersect there and there, and then form a circle like that. So there's the intersection. Now if you tilt this plane, you won't get a circle anymore. So it's really important that this plane is not tilted. So this plane needs to be perfectly horizontal, or else we will not get a circle out of this. So there's a single point, a circle. Now we're going to see how we get an ellipse. So an ellipse, also known as an oval. So I'll draw our conic out. 
How can I intersect and get an oval? So we're going to tilt the plane a little bit. Not too much, but we're going to tilt the plane a little bit. Now the more you tilt the plane, the more the less round this will be and the more uh, elongated it gets on one axis. So I drew it just tilted a tiny bit, but if we tilted it a lot more, for example, something more like this, we would get a lot thinner, longer ellipse. There is a limit to how much you can tilt it. And if you tilt it too much, you'll no longer connect it back on one side. So let's think about tilting this plane even more and the shape we would get. Now I'm going to tilt this plane a lot, almost as much as one of the generating lines. So it is getting a lot more closer to being a vertical plane now. I think that still gives me an ellipse. Yes. All right. I think this one it has to be tilted. Ah, it has to be tilted more than. I think in this case, it has to be parallel to one of these generating lines. And what shape would we get here? It's going to intersect at one point. The problem is, it does no matter how far you draw the other lines down, it never intersects down on the left. So the shape we're going to get is going to look like this right here. And I better draw a different color now. Let's go purple. So this shape is called a parabola. And it keeps going down. So this shape is a parabola. So if you are trying to make an ellipse and you tilt it too far, uh, at some point you won't, won't connect on the other side. And exactly at that moment where it no longer connects up into an ellipse, you are going to be looking at a parabola right there. Now if I keep tilting this further, meaning I make the plane more vertical, I will get an intersection on both sides of the conic. So what I mean by this is take the top of the plane and rotate it a little bit more vertically. And I'm going to get a second intersection up here. So we'll draw that version next. I think I drew the purple a little bit inaccurately. I think it goes down. It's going to look a lot more like this. And of course, this does go on forever, so the arrows, the intersection arrows, do go on forever. So that's the, how the parabola is formed. All right, last one. We're going to tilt it even more. So our plane is going to be almost vertical. So I'll draw it very close to being vertical. And now the intersection. There's two points where it intersects. This is going to form a shape that's very similar to a parabola, except it's going to look kind of like a double parabola. And these go on forever. So we'll put arrows at the ends. Anybody know the name of this shape? 
It rhymes with parabola. Oh, it's a good guess. Two parabolas would be a good, good guess. So it's called a hyperbola. So if you tilt it too far, then it will intersect on both sides. And we can call this hyperbola. All right, so that is where these shapes come from. And to be consistent, I better draw everything purple. There are other ways to generate these shapes, but this is, this is one way to, do, to, to generate them. So we've looked at points, and we've looked at circles. So check, check. So we're going to look at the other three in this section, which are ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. So we'll start, we'll start on parabolas. We're probably the most experienced with those. And we're going to start with a definition. So every parabola can be created in that way that we just looked at, cutting up that conic. Uh, we can also define them in words, and that's what we're going to do now. So it's going to be the set of all points P on the xy plane, also known as R2, that are equidistant from a fixed point F So this is called the focus. So you distant from this point F to the line D, which is called the directrix. So that's the definition of parabola right there. You can absolutely represent it with a quadratic equation, but this is the definition we're going to take. So now writing this down, d is the distance function. So d from f to p is equal to d from the directrix to p. So I just rewrote that sentence in math, and it's the distance from the focus to the point p is equal to the distance from the directrix to the point p, where d is the distance function. So we're in two dimensions, so let's give these points some names. So I'll call the x and y coordinates of the focus xf and yf. Our point p, let's just call that x and y. Now our directrix is a line. I could take any line, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, but we're going to keep it a little bit easier and just go with a horizontal or vertical line. All right, if you have a horizontal line, what is the equation for a horizontal line? X equals something. So we'll go with x equals a. What about a, oh, I said horizontal and drew a vertical. All right, horizontal line looks like that. Vertical looks like that. So horizontal line has the same y value the whole time. 
So a horizontal line, we have y equals a, and a vertical line looks like x equals b. Those are the two ways to, the way to write a horizontal line or a vertical line. So let's think about what's going on with our distance formula, our distance uh, equation up there. So let's say we have a horizontal line. y equals a. And we have a focus. I'm going to put the focus right here on the y-axis. All right, let's do our best to draw some points out that have the same distance from f to the directrix. So what is one easy point whose distance to the focus is the same as the distance to the line. So what about the point halfway between the two? So that'll be our first point. So that point is halfway between the line and the focus. So things get a lot more difficult when, whenever we plot a point that's not directly between the focus and that line. So what I mean is, if I go and measure this amount right here, and then I take that exact amount and measure over to here. So let's say that this distance is 10, and the other distance is 10, I'll get a point right here. That's 10 away from the focus and 10 away from the directrix. So any questions on that idea? I'm going to go the same amount uh, from the focus to the directrix as I go over. So I get that point right there. And of course, I can do the exact same thing on the other side. Get that point right there. Those are really the only three points that are even reasonable to uh, visually graph up there. All the other ones are way more difficult to figure out. The reason is because they are not uh, oriented with a focus. So these three are basically horizontally aligned or vertically aligned. So it's very easy to measure their distance. So the other points are going to graph out to be a parabola. So there's the three easy points to graph. And then the rest of them form a parabola like this. You can measure any of the other points on here. If you do it carefully, you can say, what about that point? Well, if I very carefully figure out this distance, it needs to be the same as this distance right here. So I think we can use the double uh, marks like that on a line to say they're the same length. The problem with doing this is it gets very uh, difficult to compute the distance right here, it's not just subtracting anymore. We have to do the whole square root Pythagorean distance. So let's go ahead and turn the equation up here into an equation that we recognize with x's and y's. So let's assume we have this situation down here with the horizontal directrix. And any point on the parabola, we're going to just call xy. And of course, this point f, we call it xf, yf. All right, distance between f and p, that's actually a little easier to write. It's going to be subtract the x coordinates, so it's going to be x minus xf squared plus y minus yf squared. So that's the distance formula right there. You subtract the x's, square it, and then subtract the y's and square it, and add those two numbers together, and then take the square root. 
The other distance, a little bit more tricky. If this point is x, y, what is the vertical distance going to be? Does it really matter the x coordinate for the distance? Nope. Only really matters about the y coordinate. The distance is not quite just y, though. What is the distance from the line to the point? So we're just going to look at y coordinates. So it's going to be big minus small. So the big y coordinate is just y. The small y coordinate is a. So we're going to go y minus a. That'll give us that distance right there. So we don't really like square roots very much, so why don't we go ahead and square both sides and get out of square roots. So if we square both sides, we have x minus xf squared plus y minus yf squared equals y minus a squared. All right, let's go ahead and do an example now. So find equation and graph parabola with focus at zero, zero. Directrix is a line x equals negative a. We're going to take a to be positive. Actually, let's just go x equals 4, negative 4. We'll put an actual number in there. So I think it's easier to graph this out first. So let's start with the graph. Focus is 0, 0. You want to be careful to focus at the origin. But remember, focus is not actually a point on the parabola. It's a focus. And then x equals negative 4. Uh oh, I should have y equals negative 4, so it matches our picture. So y equals negative 4. So I'm going to graph this in blue. I'll graph the first point, which is halfway between focus and directrix, right there. I want you to graph the other two points. And I'm going to label the coordinate 0, negative 2. I want you to graph the other two points and label them. So there are two other relatively easy points to graph. They're both on the x-axis. So figure out where the x-axis points are, graph them, and label them. So you should have gotten plus or minus 
for on the x-axis. And the reason that is, if you measure over to the focus, you get 4. And then you measure down to the directrix, you also get 4. So it's the same distance to the directrix as the focus. So from here, it should be pretty clear what the parabola is going to look like. All right, there's a graph of our parabola. You could probably use your pre-calculus one skills to tell me the equation of this. You didn't learn anything in pre-cal one? I'm a blame your teacher. I do. OK. So we could use our knowledge of the zeros. We know how it factors. We also know the y-intercept. So you can go back to pre-calculus one. If you did learn something in pre-calculus one, hopefully it was about polynomials and specifically at least degree two. Uh, so let's not use that knowledge, though. Let's use this distance idea right here, the definition that we're using. So let's think about what these distances are. So distance from the focus to the point P, it's going to be square root. All right, our focus is 0, 0. So this means x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Our focus had coordinate 0, 0. So I'm just using this distance formula at the top, where xf and yf are both 0. All right, so that's the left side. Now we're going to look at the right side, distance between directrix and the point P. So any point on the parabola will have coordinates x, y. How far is it down to the directrix? So if you know your y coordinate, how far down to the directrix will it be? So your y-coordinate measures this much. What is left over down there? Four. Four. Are these questions too easy? OK, so y plus 4. Go y and then add another 4 onto it. If you want to think about start minus end or big minus small, the big is y, and the small is negative 4. So it's y plus 4. All right, so that's distance between any point on a parabola and the directrix is y plus 4. And now these are supposed to be equal. So we have square root x squared plus y squared equals y plus 4. So the, technically we're done here. This is kind of a bad way to look at it, so let's go ahead and square both sides. x squared plus y squared equals y plus 4 squared. So foiling that out, y squared plus 8y plus 16. What simplification can I do on this step? So those y squares are going to cancel out. So subtract y squared from both sides. x squared. Let's go ahead and solve for y minus 16 equals 8y. So if I solve for y, I have x squared over 8 minus 2 equals y. And that's probably good enough right there.
technically any of these above are also correct, and I would give you full points, but I'm just going to use that last one. It seems to be the most easy to understand. All right, let's think about that with the transformations that we didn't learn in pre-calculus one either. So if I rewrite this a little bit, x over square root 8 squared minus 2 equals y. We're used to having y on the left, so I'll rewrite it with a y on the left. There are two transformations here. So our base function b of x equals square root, uh, x squared, and we know that's a regular happy parabola. What transformations are happening? What is the minus 2 outside? What transformation is that? So it's a vertical shift 2 down. So it's a y shift down 2. All right, what about the multiplication happening on the x-coordinate? So is that a sh it's going to be horizontal. It's on the x. Is it a shift or a stretch? So multiplications are always stretches or compressions. It looks like we're multiplying by 1 over square root 8. The opposite is multiplied by just square root 8, the reciprocal. So this is going to have the effect of stretching the graph horizontally by square root 8 which is a little bit bigger than it's between, let's see, it's a little bit smaller than 3. Square root 9 would be 3. So it's a stretch that's a little bit smaller than 3. So if I write the 2 down, we're going to stretch by square root 8, which is very close to 3. And then we're going to shift down 2. So let's look at our graph that we drew earlier. It is shifted, you see it shifted down to, and then it's also stretched a little bit wider. So that are the, those are the two transformations uh, that could be applied to the regular parabola. So there is a special name for the easiest point on the graph to draw. Zero, zero. Well, it won't always be 0, 0. But what is the name? What is the name of this special point right at the bottom here? We have a special name for that point. So let's call it our vertex right there. So vertex right there. It's the point directly between focus and directrix. It's the easiest point to graph. So now we know the name of that point. We're going to look at another parabola where the starting information is going to be about the uh, vertex. So this one will have the vertex at 0, 0. Focus is going to be a comma 0. And a is going to be a positive number. So I want to know about the directrix and then also graph it. So I don't know exactly where A is. It's positive. So this will be the point A0. It'll be some amount to go into the right. Whatever you draw as A will be OK. So that's the vertex. No, 
that's the focus whoa so the vertex is at zero zero Alright, where's the directrix going to have to be? So remember the vertex is halfway between the focus and the directrix. So where does the directrix need to be? So the directrix will be net negative A. Now directrix is going to be a horizontal or vertical line? has to be vertical. If it was horizontal, it would cut straight through the focus and the vertex. That wouldn't make any sense. So our directrix is going to be a vertical line, x equals negative a. So figure out the other two points that are relatively easy to graph. Getting their coordinates is going to be a little bit tricky. They're definitely going to have a as their x coordinate. You have to figure out what's their y coordinate going to be. So one of them is going to be up here, and the other point is going to be down there. I want to know what are the coordinates of those points, and then draw your parabola. So the coordinates, you, they're not going to be A and then A again, but A and 2A, because you have to go, if you count that distance, the horizontal distance is basically A and then another A. Oh, wait. So the coordinate would be regular A. A, A. And then negative A. No, I was right originally. Yeah, so you go A, you have to go A, basically two A up, two A down. Okay. So any questions on those coordinates right there? Draw your parabola, pretty easy to do. And ready to write out the equation now. So distance from your point to the focus equals distance from the point to the directrix. And our point is always going to be x, y. So <coughs> we have x minus a squared plus y minus the y coordinate of the focus is 0, so that's y minus 0 squared, equals so any point on this parabola will be x, y. How do I figure out the distance from the point x, y to the focus? How do I get that distance right there? So the 
right part of the distance is x, and the left part will be a right there. So the distance will be x plus a. You can also do a big minus small, which would be x minus negative a. That's the other way to think about it. So x plus a is what we get on the right side. And square both sides, and then cancel out your x squareds. So simplify this down as much as you can. So square both sides and simplify. So we got y squared equals 4xa. So we'll do two more examples, and then we're going to create a general rule for uh, how to do these types of problems a little bit more quickly and how to think about things in slightly different ways.